about the coronavirus outbreak. It's very important that we totally protect our Asian American community in the United States and all around the world. They're amazing people, and the spreading of the virus is not their fault in any way, shape, or form. They're working closely with us to get rid of it. We will prevail together. It's very important. So joining me now, two sitting correspondents, um, Jim Law and Natasha Chen. Thank you both uh, for joining us. I really uh, appreciate it. Uh, Natasha, I want to I want to uh, talk to you. You were in Asia with your family during the Lunar New, New Year, when the virus was first hitting the mainland China. You witnessed the first wave of the panic. Um, tell me what that was like. Talk to me about that, and then we'll, we'll talk about the implications of what the president has been talking about. Right. Well, so my family was in Taiwan and Japan, so not in mainland China, uh, where a lot of the cases were uh, popping up. That in around mid January. So, luckily, on the islands of Taiwan and where we were in Japan, there were only at the time maybe single digit handfuls of cases. Uh, but still, people were very much aware of the possible spread, and there were immediate moves to try and cut off um, travel between mainland China and Taiwan. And everywhere we went um, into restaurants, businesses, there would be a person there waiting to spritz my hands with sanitizer and then putting oh, you a call that? little device up to my forehead to take my temperature to make sure that there were at least no visible symptoms before I walked in. Yeah. So now let, let's move on and talk about what's happening. Because your, your mom lives in San Francisco Bay, in the, in, the, in the Bay Area, where you grew up, and you always felt comfortable. But uh, your mom has been sharing shocking incidents with you. What has been going on there? Yeah, so uh, these are acquaintances that are posting on social media about even just this past weekend being yelled at in a grocery store by a cashier uh, you know accusing the person of having brought the virus here from China um, and I'm also seeing posts from my friends and reporters within the Asian American Journalists Association anything ranging from being yelled at while walking the dog to social media comments telling them they should be deported and by the way, these are people who were born and raised in the U.S. Um, and I will say that uh, those of us who were born and raised here, like myself, we do have it easier than others who potentially are newer to the U.S. or maybe have an accent or are older. They have been easy targets, partially because of a language barrier. And this has been going on for a long time, but I think the coronavirus has given people um, a platform to become louder in that racism, Doc. Yeah. Uh, Kian, I want to bring you in because you you talked about this on air, and I saw your reporting. You know, you, we saw what the president said in his press conference earlier, right? But he is the one that labeled this the Chinese virus early on. Let's listen to this. And we continue our relentless effort to defeat the Chinese virus as we continue to marshal every resource at America's disposal in the fight against the Chinese virus. We've also reached agreements with Canada and Mexico on new travel rules at our northern and southern borders to halt the entry of the Chinese virus while continuing trade and commerce as it comes from China. Racist. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China. That's why it comes from China. Yeah, and listen, you said that you had some run-ins with people using racist ethnic slurs uh, since uh, this this virus um, began. Tell us. Uh, so, I think if you are a person of color in this country, and certainly, Don, you can relate to this, um, you're used to seeing this in social media. If you are a reporter, you're reporting on controversial things, it's something you are, you expect to see on your a Facebook page or Twitter, that's just something that comes along with your job. But I do not recall a time, um, except perhaps when I was very, very young on the playground, where someone said anything to my face. So I was preparing to do a live shot. I had my mic in my hand. My photographer had gone to the car to get something. My producer was standing next to the camera. And a man came up, um, nicely dressed middle-aged man, came up and said something, and it didn't register. So, yeah, I said, excuse me, sir, can I help you? And he said it again, and that's when it sunk in. Oh, 
I get what he says. And he said it to my face, um, which is a, a, definitely a difference. Um, when you heard the president, that clip that you played of the president over a number of days calling it the China virus, I immediately noticed an uptick on my Twitter page, on my Twitter mentions, where people were saying hashtag Chinese virus, China virus, and a ton of comments starting at that point when the president started using that term. But again, when that was said to my face, that was certainly a different, a different thing that I had not experienced in this country in a really long time. Yeah, things certainly have been different over the last couple of years. And, um, you experience it as a person of color. Other people may see it as partisan. Uh, we know it's not. It's racist. And we just see things with clarity, I think, sometimes more so than the larger culture because they don't really have to deal with it. And we do. So thank you both. I appreciate it. And sorry that you have to deal with this. Really sorry about that. Uh, it's not just spring breakers ignoring the threat of coronavirus.